Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As you're coming in and joining us, please feel free to stand if you're able. Let's open our time celebrating and praising Him. announcements for today. You should, there is a little flyer out there that has all of our Christmas events, so I don't have to announce those every week, and we can get to the things that matter. Today we have two announcements. One was about cookies, and one was about scholarships. Is, is, and what Honduras is later, do we have, oh, she just arrived. We'll do cookies while you get ready. Cookies. Cookies. Well, it's that time of year, and Cookie Blitz, I don't know if you can read it, but it doesn't matter. It says Cookie Blitz. It has a numbers and uh, names, and I need people, if you're interested in participating again this year, something we've done since the beginning of the par uh, pandemic, ancient, ancient times ago, but continues on in some ways. But um, we had so much fun doing that to start, and we did it last year as well. This year we're doing it a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit differently in that we are not going to deliver to everybody's home since most of you are coming to church. There are some who don't or cannot come to church and we will deliver to them. So the idea is that we will still have cookies baked, so I need bakers. We will have um, some folks, a few folks putting them together. And then we will have a few folks delivering to those people who did not pick up their cookies because they couldn't come that day or because they are um, not able to come to church at all. So hopefully we'll cover everyone that way. You'll be able to take home your box of cookies if you come to church, but if you can't or don't come to church, we'll still get you because Santa will find you. <laughs> it's going to be, um, distribution will be on the 18th of December which is right around the corner, so I need those bakers to get ready cooking, and I've got a list of that going. So if you want to sign up, I'll be here after church in the fellowship hall. Um, just grab me or send me a, a message. Um, that should be listed in the roundups and probably everywhere else where you can find me. Talk to the office. She'll, they'll take names. Um, and also, we will. Um, I won't be here next Sunday, but Carol is um, my willing participant with this, and she's happy to answer any questions or take names as well. So thank you very much. <laughs> Can take names, very good, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I 
Thank you, Danny. Good morning, my friends. Today, the Wright Board of Directors and the Scholarship Committee is announcing the recipients of the De Beaumont Memorial Scholarship for December 1st, 2022. Um, the $1,000 award will be divided between two Wright Scholars. Two qualified scholars <clears throat> applied for the De Beaumont Memorial Scholarship. And upon reviewing their applications, we, the committee decided to split the $1,000 award and $500 goes to two toward their winter tuition. And um, our treasurer has mailed off the checks to the University of Idaho in Moscow, and the other to Pacific, ooh, let me think this here, I to look at my Pacific notes. School of Religion. <laughs> the Pacific yeah, School of Religion. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so thank you, Wright Church. Your financial contributions not only support. Oh, just one minute. <laughs> you are eager. That comes next paragraph. Your financial contributions not only support this church, we're educating future leaders. Please give yourself, give yourselves and each other a pat on the back. Good job. So our right scholars are Jenny Jane and Josie McConnell. Wow. Yes, Jenny Jane, a member John. of our congregation, John. very well known and a lead, lay leader and deacon. And Josie McConnell, some of you have met, she is a granddaughter of the, where are you? Oh, they're in the back. Natalie and Richard Thatcher. We extended the um, qualifications to include grandchildren because this church doesn't have very many um, college age students. So, so Josie applied. And um, so um, anyway, the scholars are not present today, but they're photos. Oh, there they are. Yes. <laughs> yes, Jenny Jane. John, I'm Jenny, sorry. Jenny, John, and you can see him right there too. Oh, Isn't that cool? Uh -huh. I've never <laughs> been up here before. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny John, 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 Jenny, John, and um, Josie McConnell. Yes. Okay. So um, they're not present, but of course we have these photos, which really help. Uh, I will read relevant portions from their application form. Uh, Jenny, her goal is to become a UCC pastor, and she's in her first year of Pac at Pacific School of Religion, <coughs> Masters of Divinity and she's studying online. And I, I read from her own um, application form. She said, in 2015, while wor worshiping in my tiny, quirky home church in Juneau, Alaska, it was here that I learned women are welcome as pastors and have been serving as such for centuries. Ever since that day when I leaned over to my wife and told her of my call in 2015, I have been praying about it. My heart is to become a pastor. Currently, I am in a private practice, midwife, and the sole provider for my family, and attending seminary in the MDiv program. And um, she, um, she has quite a background and has many, many skills in midwifery and owns um, Red Tent Midwifery. And uh, since 2014, and um, I, she's just an amazing, uh, amazing person, which she has accomplished in her life. Amen. And uh, how am I doing on time, Heather? You, way, you went way past, so just continue okay. on. <laughs> Okay, for Josie. Okay, Josie. Here's Josie. I just have to read this. She is just so, um, so amazing. Oh, here's what jo how 
Josie describes herself, I am a full-blooded cowgirl born and raised on my family ranch in Arco, Idaho. I have been an active member of the community as well as a prominent worker on our ranch. My mm. ranch duties range from doctoring calves to driving tractors, raking hay to fixing fence, so and so forth. And she is a freshman at the University of Idaho studying fire ecology and management with a minor in range ecology. These studies will support my aspiration of working as a medic on a wild land firefighting crew. Amen. Amen. Yay. <laughs> well, this is very inspiring. Our, our whole committee is very, very, very um, excited about this. Um, and I want to, are they here? Um, uh, is Karen Ash here? Carl? My husband is on this committee too. So those two have helped me so much. And a special thanks to Liz in the office, always helping me figure out how to uh, accomplish what I need to do. So thank you one and all. And I hope I'm not taking your papers, Heather. There. I think I did it. Thank you. Well done. Thank you so much. much. Thank you. Yes. Before we do the call to worship, do you are you okay getting down there? There you go. Okay. <laughs> we did start Advent last week, and Advent is often marked by four things, and we celebrated. Jenny John actually spoke about hope, so we will light the candle of hope. And then today, we take a moment to bring peace. And you think about ways you can bring peace into the world, peace into your life. Ask God's peace to descend upon you. Today, we light the candle of peace. Amen. There will be peace. <laughs> it's coming. Peace is coming. And if it goes out again, I will bring another candle. <laughs> hmm. The call to worship, and this is... Uh, in unison, as you would follow with the bold print, thank you. Blessed be the God of hope, who has done wondrous things. Blessed be the God of love, who walks with us even in the most terrible of times. Blessed be the God of peace, who calls us to faith and trust that better days are on their way. O oh, mighty one, you, like the cedars of Lebanon, adorn the temples of our lives, and fill our senses with the sweetness of your salvation. Purify our lives when we stray from your precepts. Bring us into your kingdom when we lose our way. Touch us with your own mentality when we settle for things that perish. We are ready for your coming, O oh God, the coming of your royal kingdom. Amen. Amen. Please feel free to stand if you're able and join with us in celebrating him.
take a moment to greet your neighbor, say good morning, and then we'll come back together and worship. But definitely a wake up. I love this. I love this. Just can't fall. the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that He should give His only Son to make a wretch His treasure. How great the pain of searing along. The Father turns his face away As wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory Behold the man upon a cross My sin upon his shoulders Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers It was my pain that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. morning. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to get us back on time here. So. <laughs> 
Two weeks ago, uh, Wright Church received uh, recognition from Faith and Humanity Medical Missions at their annual fundraiser, Vino for Honduras. Uh, we had 14 individuals from Wright Church or associated with our church in attendance. Pastor Heather was introduced. I would like to read what they read at the fundraiser. <clears throat> On November 3rd, 2020, in the midst of the pandemic, Honduras experienced Category 4 Hurricane Eta. Two weeks later, Category 5 Iota pummeled the same region. Wright UCC Church trusted Faith and Humanity Medical Missions to use the church's monetary gifts to ensure safety and stability to many. The congregation gave $10,000. With that money, three families of workers were given a small monthly stipend to provide food and water and to rescue the, the stranded and homeless. Our Honduran team worked with shovels and wheelbarrows to clean mud and debris from streets and houses. They rebuilt built homes. The church has also provided eyeglasses, gift bags, personal care items, and most recently, PPEs. The congregation has been uh, characterized by the term radically generous. Faith and Humanity Medical Missions has not had the opportunity to publicly thank Wright Church for their compassion and willingness to care for the people of Honduras, and particularly for some of the 4.7 million people affected by the back-to-back -back hurricanes. <clears throat> In addition to that, uh, at, the, at the fundraiser, uh, the, one of the families that was involved in a lot of what I just read, their daughter, Emily, was, uh, was part of their family, the, that one, one family, and uh, she wanted to show some support for what Faith and Humanity had done for her. She is uh, one of the little girls that came to the U.S. and lived with us. So she put together a short video and wanted to thank Faith and Humanity who got support from us through, through, uh, through from the church through, through that. So here's a picture of Emily now. She's 17. So wow. hopefully the video will work. So. Hello, my name is Emily Amador. I'm 17 years old and I'm from Honduras. I want to thank each one of you for being part of this great event. Thanks to your collaboration, these stories and mine are possible. In 2009, when I was four years old, I was diagnosed with cancer. It was a tumor on my right cheek. The two surgeries were performed, and my surgery number two. Doctors told us that they could not longer do anything for me. Besides that, every medication had an effect on me because the two were always reborn after each surgery. So much was the desperation for my parents to have heard the words of the doctors that my father, Jalia Amador, connected with being a base care through the internet and explain my test to him. That day, he was traveling to Boise to have a work meeting to discuss the next trip to Honduras. So he told us that he was going to tell our situation to the group. During his trip to Boise, he talked with his wife, Mirza, about my case and how difficult it was to give an immediate answer. Mirko still says, and that meeting, he presented the case and thank God everything was aligned. The process to my trip to the United States began, and in a matter of three months, all the procedures could be carried out. And all the collaborators emerged so that I could be evaluated and receive my treatment in San Luis Hospital for Seattle. Our hopes were then as doctors get to make better sanctions of that. But God always put the angels in the way. Again, we began the chemotherapy process, hoping to win the battle 
against cancer. In this eight months that my mother and I were in the United States, I received an instructing surgery of tumor and also a long cycle of chemo, which this would not have been possible with the help of God in H1 and H1 and In January 2012, I received my last chemo. As a God size and surpassing me in voice, the end of the year of 2011, at the mountain of snow was very little. And like all Latino children, I want to see, touch, and play with the snow. <laughs> to bring up the day after my last chemo, nevers. And I was able to play with my father under the snow. Because my father raised us in Christmas for two months. That <laughs> snowfall was like a sign from the heaven that God was with us. First of all, I want to thank God for working this miracle in my life. And the angels that keep running away, Glenn and Glenn around us. They are my grandfathers of my heart, who did open the doors of their house and heart to receive us. We work with great strengths in their house, that despite the difference of languages, we manage to communicate with each other. I'm especially grateful to each of the members of the organization, Faith and Humanity, and St. Luke's Hospital, for this great work to make it possible to me to born again. Thanks to your collaborations, the stories like mine, and many other testimonies are possible. Miracle of snow and love. Children are here, could go on up to class if they would like to, or they can stay with us if they would like. In this time of confession, <clears throat> I invite you to reflect on those places in your life where you've given up. Is the world too much with you? Is there a relationship struggle that haunts your days? Are you so frustrated by what you can't do that you have stopped doing anything? You can um, share in your own heart anything where you've given up and intentionally them instead give it up to God mm. and share this in silence or if you'd like to share it in, in silence is good silence is good yes, I'm, I'm a coach silence is good I know personally I share a lot with God in silence over that particular thing in the words of assurance God give, gives the hope that sustains and strengthens us to grow as her beloved children. By sharing your struggles, you give God permission to set you free. Friends, you are forgiven. Amen. God of timeless grace, you fill us with joyful expectations. Make us ready for the, for the message that you promises your way. That with uprightness of heart and holy joy, we may eagerly await the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. God of hope, you raised us into the of John the baptizer as a herald who calls us to conversion. We joyfully await the glorious coming of Christ. <clears throat> we
We pray to you for the needs of our church and the world. Hear our humble prayer. Give voice to your presence among us until the day of the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Laboring God, I have to turn. With axe and winnowing fork, you clear a holy space where hurt and destruction have no place, and a little child holds sway. Clear our lives of hatred and despair, sow seeds of joy and peace that shoots of hope may spring forth and we may live in harmony with one another. Amen. Thank you. So beautiful. In Advent, and here we are in our time of Advent, thank you for making the journey in the snow. It was my second time driving in snow, 
and I did not, uh, the first time, my brake wasn't working. I was wondering why my brake didn't work. And then suddenly I discovered that uh, you just have to drive much slower, and then your brakes work. So we're okay. So I've been going five miles an hour the rest of the days. <laughs> Advent is a time filled with angelic messages and miraculous births. In Advent, male-dominated battle images give way to female receptivity and angelic announcements. You will give birth. Some are silenced. Zachariah is made mute. Joseph is told in a dream to stay with Mary. This is a time when women, angels, and the wild man John the Baptist are given voice. So I turn to Paul's most philosophical work in this time of mystery as we will talk about Romans today. And it is because Romans is his most carefully written work and it details a theology so rich that it continues to give life to the faithful. And in this passage, you'll hear the glory of God, the truth of God, the promises of God, hope, joy, and peace. It is an Advent announcement. It reminds me of that one Christmas Eve, right? The night before Jesus was born and all those, uh, all those shepherds were outside and suddenly the sky opens and the angels announce that he is born. Go find the Savior. It's this moment of glory, glory, glory. And this is one of Paul's glory moments. It's a time when he sees beyond the noise of all things into the everyday struggle seeking the mystery of what God is doing all around. So we'll let the angels wait and we'll allow Paul to lead us through this mysterious door of unexpected grace. Romans chapter 15 and I begin with verse 4. And I begin with verse 4, which starts with 4F, for, for whatever was written. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that, I don't know what that is, just <laughs> go to the sermon. And, and yeah, slide over to the sermon. Listen. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus so that together you may with one voice Glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the ancestors, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again, he says, rejoice, all Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the people praise him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, it never ceases to amaze me when a room full of strangers becomes a gathering of friends. During that interview process, we had a potluck dinner after I preached, and thankfully the sermon went well because otherwise it would have been an awkward affair. But I really enjoyed being with the search committee who had not met a lot in person. A lot of it was done via Zoom. And they sat and they chat and you could see them discovering one another. And by the end of the evening, we were connected. And it happens again and again. When we sit with someone we do not know, 
If we take the time, we often discover a deep unity. It reminds me of rock hounding. My dad and I, and my dad used to take us out into the desert into a place called the uh, Afton Canyon, it was called. It was on the way from where I lived in Southern California on the way to Las Vegas, just in the middle of nowhere. Afton Canyon is a wash from the nearby mountains, and it gets a regular reset of jasper and agate and quartz. When you see it from afar, it just looks like dirt. It's only as you wander and linger, spend time, explore, that you get to see the gems that are inside the canyon walls. When Paul is preaching, the church is negotiating a divide between people who have not yet sat together and they have only seen each other from afar. They are Jews and non-Jews, and both are interested in following the path of Christ. Non-Jews were called Gentiles, and the difference between the two groups was both physical and historical. Jews followed dietary laws, and males were circumcised. Gentiles did not and were not. Historically, Jews saw themselves as those God led out of slavery and into the promised land. They were the chosen people. The Gentiles did not have such a, a united narrative. So the debate of the early Christian church was, could those who were not of Jewish descent become part of God's people? And it was quite the scandal then when Paul brought the Gentiles to his uh, Jewish home for dinner because at first all those in the room, all they could see were their differences. The book of Galatians records Paul's eruption that occurs in Antioch. And you can think of the city of Antioch as a type of seminary. It was where people went to learn about the faith before they became leaders of the church. And here's what Paul writes. He says, when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood self-condemned. For until certain people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But after they came, he drew back and kept himself separate for the fear of the circumcision faction. And the others joined him in this hypocrisy. You can feel his heart break. You know, there's this group of uncircumcised, pork-eating Gentiles knocking at Christ's door. And the circumcision faction decides they are not allowed to come in unless they have a particularly painful operation and give up bacon. <laughs> they let the appearance of difference distance them from giving and receiving grace. This is Paul's watershed moment. His ministry is defined by his quest to bring Gentiles and Jews into equal standing within Christ's church. Unlike the way he is often portrayed by those who want to keep control, Paul was neither a gatekeeper nor a rule maker. He wanted to bring his new friends to dinner. Another more modern example Amy Grant will receive the Kennedy Center Honors this year. And she is celebrated in my circle because she affirmed her niece's upcoming marriage to a woman, saying, what a gift to our whole family to widen the experience of our whole family. Now, Amy Grant was criticized when she crossed over from Christian music to pop music when she wore a leopard skin pattern top with leather pants, and when she divorced Gary Chapman in 1999 and married her now husband, Vince Gill. She was not clean enough, pure enough, Christian enough. But that was never her concern. You know her music. We sang one of her songs last week. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. 
She's also the one who made famous the song El Shaddai, a song which still moves me to the core. And one of her songs as I was playing my CD in my car, yes, I still use CDs, but it took hold of me this past week. And perhaps you're like me, from time to time, you give thought about how you might like to be remembered. I like the off-spoken epitaph of good and faithful servant. Another that speaks to me is Jesus' words to his, dis to his disturbed disciples after Mary has anointed him with oil. Jesus says of her, she has done what she could. But Grant gave me a new one. She's got her father's eyes. In this song, she sings the same people as God sees them. I may not be every mother's dream for her little girl, she sings, and my face may not grace the mind of everyone in the world, but that's all right. As long as I can have one wish, I pray. When people look inside my life, I want to hear them say, she's got her father's eyes eyes. Eyes that find the good in things when good's not around. Eyes that find the source of help when help cannot be found. Eyes full of compassion, seeing every pain, knowing what you're going through and feeling it the same, just like my father's eyes. Now, I was so moved by this song that I began to consider writing a whole sermon series around her work. The idea stopped having appeal, however, when I learned that the one who wrote this song, My Father's Eyes, is Gary Chapman, her former husband. Inwardly, I shouted, no, I want to find the pure Amy Lee. I want to speak only about the songs that she has written. And so I Googled her songs, and I found out that many of her best songs were actually written by someone else. Well, that's not going to work, I thought. And as I drove down Orchard, the final length of my commute, God gave me a word. Does the fact that others wrote the songs make Grant's contribution any less impactful? Paul brought no new word, no new Jesus he brought the word to those who had not yet heard it. And he fought for those who were already part of the movement to truly see the hearts of those who wanted in. Paul had his father's eyes. And so Advent is a call for us to examine our surroundings more closely to turn over the stones, to look for beauty, and to seek where God dwells. Pregnant teenage girl, mother of Jesus. Cave, stable, whichever, birthplace of Jesus. People working the graveyard shift. Those shepherds given the honor to announce Jesus' birth. So friends, who might we look at differently this Advent season? Who's knocking at your door? Amen. We come to the time of an invitation to generosity. What a sweet way of saying that. Give us your money. Invitation to generosity. God is unwavering in giving to us. So we give so that others might know God's love, just as you saw twice this morning. So let these collected resources instill hope and bring peace into the lives of all we touch. The offering will now be received. As the ushers make their way through the church and you give, please feel free to join with us in praising him. Yes.
each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each man's dignity and save each one's pride. Receive these gifts of the people's hearts. Use them well, we pray, to bring light into this world. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, friends, we come to this time of communion, and we gather around Christ's table to wait, to remember, and to be filled with the Spirit's peace once again. I see the light has grown. As Christ excluded no one, neither do we. Everyone here is welcome at the table. The Lord be with you. We do not have the liturgy back there, huh? Okay. Nice. Start again. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Mm. Ah, it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God our comforter and our sustainer. In the lineage of Abraham and Sarah, Elizabeth and Zechariah, and Mary and Joseph, we come to Advent's communion table, awaiting the promise of your redeeming love. Here we recognize that you, O oh God, made us in your image and filled us with longing that our hearts might remain restless until they find their rest in you. And so together with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Deacons, please come forward. Now, holy God, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine, that we might experience your presence and lay claim to the hope and promise of this season. Amen. And as we prepare to receive, we proclaim the mystery of faith, saying, Christ has died. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. 
this bread and this cup bring peace to us all. When you receive, please hold your bread and your cup until all are served. On the night of Jesus' arrest, he took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to assist to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body, and it is given for you. Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Let's try that again. This is the bread of life given for each of you. And again, hold it until we are all served. Thank you. <laughs> Do you receive? Thank you. The yearning for Christ's presence working in you. Deacons, please come forward. In the same manner, after dinner, Jesus took the cup. And he said, this is a cup of forgiveness poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of all sin, both yours and all of the world's. Know that often as you drink of this, you, my friends, are forgiven. You are set free. This is the cup of life given for you. And Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me.
This is the cup of life poured out for you. For our time of prayer, we give God thanks and praise again that each of you have made it here for your health. <laughs> we hold those who are not here in our prayers again for better health, um, for those colds and flus to go away, for those aches and pains to fly away. We continue our prayers for our beloved ones who are hurting or ill. And we continue to keep our world in prayer uh, for more peace, for more equality, for more ability for all people to have what's needed, food and shelter and education. We open our hearts to this time of prayer. Holy and loving God, we thank you for the life you've given to each of us and the love you have for one for each of us that we then have for one another. We recognize that there are folk among us and near us who are indeed a prayer of your comforting touch, your word, and your healing. Lord, we ask your special care over Davy Jones today. And for all those whose names I I'm not speaking, but we know who are close to our congregation's heart. We pray for those who are in the midst of making difficult choices in their lives, that they would have the faith to step forward with you, to sometimes wait on your direction, but all times know and live with hope that tomorrow brings a new day, a new opportunity, and that you, O oh God, are in the business of breaking down barriers and allowing people to live. You are the one who gives us life. You are the one that brings us life. You are the one that shows us the way to give life to others. And so particularly in this time of Advent, So particularly in this time of Advent, let us be attentive to your calling on our lives. For we stand in the tradition, O oh Father, that each one of us has been called to be your ministers on this earth, that we are called to bring your love and your care, that we are called to see each one that we encounter with your eyes. And so do a good work in us, we pray, both this day and throughout the week, that we might be surprised by the mystery around every corner or where we look with our faith. There you are. We thank you for this congregation of support, for, <laughs> for cookies, for giving to... Uh, scholarships for giving to people on Honduras for all that you're doing through us. We thank you for that opportunity. Build your kingdom here, we pray. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please feel free to stand and join with us. We lift up joyful, joyful. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. 
Hearts on full like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works and joy surround you, earth and have reflect the rays. Stars and angels sing around me, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, fell and mountain, flowering meadow, flashing Bless you. Yeah, you 